Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Well, fluke season is officially off and running here at the Jersey Shore. Opening day was Monday. We got official word from the state of New Jersey on opening day night, 5 o'clock. In fact, the official email from the State Division of Fish and Wildlife arrived at my desk on Tuesday morning, a full 24 hours after the season kicked off. Way to go, Phil. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It is May 5th, 2022, and yes, fluking at the Jersey Shore is underway as of this Monday. And the, the reports we're getting, uh, folks are already putting some tasty fillets into the cooler. Fisherman's Den in Belmar, just to my north, said fluke fishing in Shark River on the opening day was pretty good with some of the rental boats limiting out. That's according to Bobby there and crew at the den. They said the new 17 inch regulation was a help but they did say that there were some fish caught over 20 inches there in Shark River. So that first 18 incher you decide to put in the box, if that's gonna be your one for the day, you might wanna give that some thought. It's gonna be a little bit like rolling the dice. Welcome to 2022. Here in Point Pleasant Beach, Fisherman Supply said the season opener was lights out for anglers here fishing along the Manasquan River. Uh, a lot of majority, or a majority of the anglers did limit out on the day, uh, reported good numbers, and a majority of the fluke were caught on quarter and half ounce jig heads tipped with gulp, of course. Down in my early season summer flounder grounds on Great Bay, uh, Rebecca McFerrin Schaefer, she let me know this week on Monday, just as she caught it, 20 incher out near the clam stakes, near the stink house, 20 incher, nice job, Rebecca. Uh, she was using a live minnow. One of the things Rebecca said is she likes to fish on the bottom. Her husband likes to fish that live minnow under a bobber. And of course, that's a great tip. If you start getting heavily cabbaged out on the bottom, you can float that, war that, that minnow right up over top of the uh, grass. Not a problem, not yet, so I hear. Down into Cape May County, it didn't take long for the grassy sound crew uh, to find the first bite and the first weigh-ins. The first weigh-ins of the season came rather early on Monday when a father and son team caught a kingfish along with two 17-inch fluke and a 20-incher. That was in Turtle Creek by Kayak on Glow Gulp on top of the tide. This is the time of year. We're gonna hear more about gulp and fish bites throughout the season. I mentioned that kingfish, another bycatch to report out of Cape May County uh, in South Jersey. It included a weak fish for Adrian Dedeker from Ocean View. Checked in with the folks at Fanatics in Ocean City. Uh, apparently Adrian started out with gulp, but then he switched over to spearing for a personal best weak fish, 6.4 pounds. Good to see those fish in the area. My buddy, Bob Bolger, he got out with a couple of buddies in Cape May on the opening day did pretty well. Three anglers, 17 flatties, five keepers. A good day indeed. It is the earliest fluke season, summer flounder, for those of you south of the Route 72 bridge. It's the earliest season we've had in New Jersey in about 20 years. Um, for your fishermen subscribers, of course, you get the digital access to the weekly edition. I have a column, an editor's log, out this week. It's available to you, subscribers, at thefisherman.com. Kind of takes a little look at the summer flounder regulations we've had at the Jersey Shore over the past 20 years. An interesting retrospective, if you will, 20 fluking years. Now, of course, on a regulatory side, the government has really constricted us so much over the years to the point where a lot of folks don't think that summer flounder fluke arrive in our backwaters until Memorial Day which of course is not true. Those fish are there. In fact, this is a great time of year to get on those flatties in the back, in the skinny water, in Delaware, in New Jersey, thinking some of those, uh, those oh, along some of the sedges, the flats, uh, in some of those creeks as well, particularly close to the docks and the salty rivers. Now, subscribers, you've received your May monthly edition with all the feature articles about the early part of the fluke season, where, when, and how, right? Well, do you remember back during the show season when you came to see me at those shows, you got your new or renewing subscription to the Fisherman? Think back, I gave you a free gift, you remember? I said, put this away until fluke season. Fish bites, remember? For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. 
Now, I'm still waiting for the official response from the state of Delaware. They, too, seem to be slow in updating their website. But my understanding is that summer flounder size limit is expected to drop to 16 inches. You still have that four fish bag limit in Delaware. Uh, and of course, there's no closed season. Uh, also, black sea bass, it's expected. It's going to be a 15 fish bag, 13 inch size limit with an open season from May 15th to December 11th. As soon as we get all that official word, I'll pass that along, but uh, it's my understanding that's what you're pretty much fishing on now. And of course, if you're in New Jersey fishing on Delaware Bay west of the coal regs, you also have that special limit, as do the anglers surf fishing at Island Beach State Park. Now, I sneaked out on Saturday for a little bit of closing bell togging. I was out with uh, Swagmatic and the NJ Fishing Club crew aboard the Mary M4 out of Barnegat Light. Uh, a few good fish on board, slow pick for the day, and uh, folks like Mary Reggett's got on the board, and uh, not hard to do, outfished this guy right here. I find blackfish to be the toughest fish to catch. Still came home with some fillets. I gotta thank Swagmatic for that. Keep in mind that while New Jersey's tog season has come to a close, for spring anyway, we won't reopen again until sometime later this summer, August 1st. Those Delaware toggers continue to pound away at the wrecks through May 15th, and then they'll switch right on over to black sea bass. The folks at Lewis Harbor reported this week on the Katy did. The crew there uh, saw some really good uh, tog in action out of Lewis, Delaware. In fact, Scott Shoup's fish here tipped the scale at 10.96 pounds. Glenn Melrose caught one at 10.4 pounds. And Al Maz tog weighed in at 9.33 pounds. An impressive array of blackfish there aboard the Katy did. Maryland as well. The regulations for blackfish are different down in the state of Maryland. In fact, Ke Kelly Langone Milano, a fisherman subscriber from Long Island, who just started tog fishing back in October. She said, it's been nothing but the most fun I've ever had. Well, she just submitted an application for an IGFA 30 pound line class record for this behemoth 18 pound tog that was caught last Friday aboard Chase and Tides with Captain Chase Ebley aboard uh, with this amazing catch where her husband James, as well as Bruce Stout, New Jersey guy, Chuba Graham, Jason Larson, and Richie Negron. Just started tog fishing back in October. Way to go, Kelly. She said she's gunning for that Fisherman Magazine's dream boat now. She is a subscriber and looking forward to getting out. That tournament, of course, is underway as of May 1st. Uh, for you New Jersey, Delaware Bay subscribers especially, keep in mind Weakfish. We had mentioned Weakfish before out of Ocean City, but that's a great way for you to get on the board early in the month of May and stay on that leaderboard because there are some good fish moving around the Jersey Shore at this point. I mentioned that previously out of Fanatics. Well, the folks at Grumpy's in Ocean County report this week that store regular Chris Ventrice had a monster 26-incher this week on soft plastics. Might be time to hit those bridges, docks, and piers at night for your shot at a nice May tide-running weak fish. I know with the blurred backgrounds, I, some folks love them, some folks hate them. But you know that blurred background really is a help. Look at me, I'm standing here burning this spot. You all know where I am. I'm looking for a blood trail along the Manasquan uh, wall here, but I haven't found one just yet. But I'll tell you what, I, I'm wondering at what point will we start putting these fake images up with the blurred backgrounds when the fake, uh, the Facebook police, yeah, fake book is right, Facebook police start checking out our altered image perspective. I did mention the bluefish are on the prowl. We got some reports last week inside Manasquan. I'm getting them through several uh, of the salty rivers here in Jersey. Uh, they're in Barnegat Bay. I've got confirmation on that. But I'll tell you what we haven't seen here is that bloody blitzkrieg along the wall here. I'm wondering if some of these bluefish came in uh, when we had all those windy conditions. We certainly had a chill, but they are spread out throughout some of these back bay waters. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, it's looking like that melee should start anytime soon. We'll continue to talk about bluefish. Plus, I got striped bass reports for you ahead. But first, let's spend two minutes with my buddy, George, the Pocono Outdoors guy. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the action continues to be on the Delaware River. Kind of great fishing, great time of year to get out there. Uh, the shad bite is still going real strong. I tied in with a couple of our favorite guides. Uh, Rusty Ball's uh, guide service, checked in with him over there at the Easton Falls area. He said fishing's really good. He's getting lots of big row, getting customers on lots of fish. Also, I checked in with Tim Keeber down at Finseeker Guide Service, and he's doing the same thing down in the Scudder's Fall area, getting lots of people on fish. There's good shad in the river 
still, guys. And I think we have a couple weeks of this run. So if you want to get out, it's a good time now to get out and get on some of those shad. Now, also, we talked last week about some of those big stripers following these shad up. We're starting to see some real big girls move into the river. Uh, I've seen guys uh, posting up 30 plus pounders. So this is the time, too, if you want to get out and catch some big striper in Delaware, is the time to do it. Maybe get a few of those shad you just caught and chunk them up for bait in the Delaware. That's a good tactic, too. So think about that. Now, why we're talking about stripers, I can't forget about places like this, my home lake of Beltsville here. Guys like uh, Josh Taylor and uh, Jeremy Green were out, uh, and they were out here jigging and chunking and getting into some really big, not big stripers, but quantity of stripers. Uh, a couple of schoolies, you know, they're not the, the monsters you're going to catch in the river, but they're really fun to catch, and there's lots of them. Also up in Wallen Palm Pack, I checked in with friend Will Groper. Uh, he's out doing the same thing, uh, hitting that water, getting in some great uh, striper up on the pack. So again, if you want to get in some stripers, now's the time to do it before that water really heats up and they move into a uh, deeper water. But I did want to forget a uh, friend Jen Wong checked in. He says, don't forget about the trout. There's still a great trout bite going on, whether you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Uh, Jen was hitting those streams, working a jigging worm on a float. And he's, that's been real deadly on these brown trout. So a couple of great techniques there for you guys. Uh, spring is here. Get out and fish. From Pennsylvania, I'm George, your Pocono Outdoors guy. Now I mentioned being down here not seeing any bloody scene of the crime any day now. We haven't seen those uh, mad inlet blitzes. Perhaps that is because of the wind and cold that I mentioned before, but I do have some confirmation. Uh, it, it's funny. I saw someone on social media the other day posted something along the lines of, you know what? People are more tight-lipped about bluefish catches now than they are with striped bass. Pretty sure. But uh, Jeff Evans and the Creekside crew in Waretown confirmed for me, yes, bluefish are in the bay. And thanks to five-year-old Sharpie Andrew LaFonte, I can confirm that is true. By the way, Jeff Evans told me that he's getting some reports from some of the offshore guys, 40, 50 miles offshore, just loaded with bluefish. So again, one of those situations where they're not here, they're somewhere else, but hopefully they're here in no time. Uh, speaking of which, we're also getting some reports out at the Hudson Canyon of Bluefin on the prowl. I got a report from uh, the Jamaica. The big Jamaica was out on a tilefish trip recently. Uh, so the Bluefin are in the area. Uh, in fact, right here in Manasquan, over at uh, Captain Bill's Landing in Point Pleasant Beach, a few hundred feet from where I'm standing right now, a nice way in earlier this week for the end game tournament crew, 178 pound Bluefin. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's really a good sign for you permit holders your HMS permit holders. If you don't have your tuna permit, go to HMS permits and get that. But the latest news out of NOAA Fisheries this week, the new retention limits take effect as of May 6. Now I'm sure with the high cost of fuel, especially with diesel, that's going to impact some of our bluefin and yellowfin reports later on in the season too. When gas prices are down, get immense numbers of tuna reports. But somebody's got to be on that recon game, the end tournament crew game. They were out there. So I'm sure that bluefin Bluefin, as soon as we can just get out past the uh, wind, uh, the bluefin are there for the taking. Delaware River surf casters on the striper front, they're telling me the striped bass action is still going strong. Derek Fredrickson, Quentin Weigel, and Boopy Norman here, they are telling me that the riverside stripe bite is, striper bite is still going strong along our west coast, along the Delaware River. Soon those fish will drop out. Maybe we'll get a little Cape May uh, rip spite this uh, spring, who knows? And I hope that they hug the coast real tight coming up Cape May, Atlantic County. We are getting some solid reports out of South Jersey in Atlantic and Cape May County of striped bass in the back. A lot of small fish, but there's a lot of good light tackle action. Although Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle in Brigantine tells me that the front side beaches in Atlantic County are starting to produce. As regular Army Dan has reported, he's caught quite a few stripers this week out there on the rock. Same thing along the Ocean County stretch. Figure from here down to Island Beach State Park and into Long Beach Island. Great reports coming out of Long Beach Island. A lot of big catch and release stripers taken on clam, uh, but that bite is continuing up through Island Beach as well. Uh, certainly the time uh, to get out there and start thinking about some front side plug. And although I did mention clam, Dan Perez let me know that he got on them good at Island Beach on Friday using clam. But I've been talking to a couple of buddies. It's time to pack those plug bags and start working on those Ocean County beaches. And I would imagine this movement of fish along the front beaches in Monmouth County should start producing as well. As far as Raritan Bay, what can I say? And Fuego, 
on fire. It continues and it should continue for some time now. I'm heading out a little bit later on this afternoon with Erwin Heinrich of Scales and Tails, but Raritan Bay has still been a locus for some great striped bass action. I heard from Mike Baker this week who said 10 year old Zayden Tebout, an avid freshwater fisherman, never fished the brine before. He got out on his very first saltwater trip this week aboard Captain Dave Tangan's Dorothy Grace on the Raritan Bay landed this awesome striper. After releasing this personal best you know what Zayden said he said quote can we do this every week amen Zayden amen the Fisherman Magazine's Coastal Kayak Clash, that got underway this week. New Jersey's John Jurgovich is first on the board in the Coastal Kayak Clash this season with a 35 and a half inch striper. I do believe the first Porgy and Sea Robin are also on the board for Dreamboat Fishing Challenge leaderboard contention. I would expect we're gonna see more of those uh, weigh-ins at some point very soon, especially this month. Don't forget, May is Week Fish Month. It's the fish of the month in the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. To enter that tournament, all you have to do is subscribe to the magazine. $29.95, you get all 38 editions of the, of the magazine. That's 12 monthly, 26 weekly editions. Plus, go out and fish, catch that jumbo week fish or that jumbo fluke this week. Take it into one of our certified weigh stations where we have the weigh scales. It's any one of the tackle shops listed in the magazine. Enter to win. Grand prize this year is a Steiger 23 Miami. Second place, not too shabby either. A trip to Marina Pezvela in Capos, Costa Rica. In fact, until next week, why don't I leave you with a little report, see what we're all missing from out there in Capos. My buddy Ben here from La Pura Vida, the pure life of Costa Rica. Catch him up this week. Enjoy the fluke season start, and I'll see you again next week right here at thefisherman.com. Hey guys, we're checking in here from Costa Rica, from the Marina Pez Vela. We've had some excellent bill fishing this last couple of weeks. We just finished the Offshore World Championships here at the Marina Pez Vela with 37 boats from literally all corners of the world. Uh, the guys released 600 sailfish and 65 marlin over four competition days. For our anglers and tourists coming down, the bill fishing is looking really hot at the moment. Boats are going out and catching anywhere between three and 10 sailfish a day, plus blue marlin. There's some great yellowfin tuna fishing out there. And we've had some really big trophy mahi mahi or dorado as we call them here in the 40 to 50 pound range. Closer to shore, along the beaches, rocks and islands, we've had some excellent rooster fishing with some big trophy rooster fish in the 30 to 50 pound range, plus some snook at the river mouths and jacks, mackerel and all of the other inshore species we get here. I hope to see you down here soon guys. Pura Vida from Costa Rica.